हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द मिडल पोर्शन एंड द पोस्टीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द नॉर्मा बेसैलिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द एंटीरियर पार्ट इन माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर नाउ इन द मिडल पोर्शन इन द सेंट्रल पार्ट वी कैन सी द वोमर बोन विच सेपरेट्स द नेजल कैविटी इनटू टू हाफ्स एंड सुपीरियरली दिस वोमर बोन इज डिवाइडिंग इंटू टू एला विच आर जस्ट आर्टिकुलेटिंग विद द रोस्ट्रम ऑफ द स्पीनोइड then posterior to this in the midline this is the bar of bone which is formed by the body of the sphenoid and the basilar portion of the occipital bone and in the center so here near the uh, just anterior to the margin of the foramen magnum there is a tubercle which is known as the pharyngeal tubercle now the lateral part of the middle portion it has uh, the the different parts of two bones are visible so one uh, is of sphenoid bone and another is of uh, temporal bone so what are the different parts of the sphenoid bone which are present in the lateral part these this is the pterygoid process so this is the part of sphenoid bone having medial pterygoid plate lateral pterygoid plate and pterygoid fossa and on this side that is lateral to this this is the greater wing of the sphenoid now the what are the three parts which are visible for the temporal bone this is one squamous part of the temporal bone then petrous part of the temporal bone then the tympanic part of the temporal bone so these are the three uh, parts of the temporal bone which are present in the lateral part of the middle portion now coming to the central portion again so this ala is just articulating with the rostrum of the sphenoid lateral to this there are two canals are visible so the lateral one is known as the palato vaginal canal and medial one is known as the vomero vaginal canal so these two canals they just communicate with the pterygoid fossa that is pterygo palatine fossa now coming more laterally this is a medial pterygoid plate this medial pterygoid plate superiorly it is showing a boat shaped fossa which is known as the scaphoid fossa and the upper part that is sorry inferior part of this medial pterygoid plate it has a hook like structure which is known as the pterygoid hamulus now coming more medial to this scaphoid fossa this is known as the pterygoid tubercle so which is just overhanging over the foramen lacerum so this is pterygoid tubercle this is scaphoid fossa this is the pterygoid hamulus now this is known as the pterygoid fossa which is present in between the two pterygoid plates and this this is the lateral pterygoid plate so lateral pterygoid plate is giving attachment to the pterygoid muscle that is lateral pterygoid from the lateral surface and medial pterygoid from the medial surface of the pterygoid plate so just uh, near to the this margin of uh, posterior margin of this pterygoid plate this is the foramen which is known as the foramen ovale through the foramen ovale what are the different structure passing that is mandibular nerve accessory meningeal artery lesser petrosal nerve and emissary veins behind this you can feel the spine so this is known as the spine of sphenoid this sharp bo bony portion behind the foramen ovale this is known as the spine of sphenoid and the foramen present in relation to it this is known as the foramen spinosum through this foramen spinosum the middle meningeal artery passes and the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve that is meningeal branch arising from the main trunk of the mandibular nerve which is known as the nervus spinosum now coming posterior to this this is the petrous part of the temporal bone through the petrous part this carotid canal is traversing and through this carotid canal the internal carotid artery is passing now coming more uh, and the sympathetic plexus around this artery it also passes through this uh, canal now coming more laterally so this is the tympanic plate so this part is known as the tympanic plate it has anterior surface which is forming the posterior margin of this mandibular fossa and it has the posterior part which is just forming the anterior border lower border and part of the posterior border so this tympanic plate is contributing to this external acoustic meatus now this fissure which is present between this tympanic plate and mastoid process is known as the tympano mastoid fissure so this is the tympano mastoid fissure this is the tympano mastoid fissure which is present between the tympanic plate and the mastoid now 
just behind it this is the stylet process in this bone the stylet process is uh, not a complete process otherwise it is a quite long process which is just present like this so this is the stylet process behind this stylet process one foramen is present which is known as the stylomestoid foramen and through this stylomestoid foramen which structure is passing that is the facial nerve and stylomestoid branch of the posterior auricular artery so this is all about the lateral part of this now coming more laterally lateral to these foramina this portion is basically contributed by the greater wing of the sphenoid and the squamous part the temporal bone the anterior lateral portion is forming the infratemporal crest so this is the infratemporal crest which is giving origin to the lateral pterygoid muscle and this posterior medial margin is just articulating with the squamous squamous portion of the temporal bone so this is anterior lateral and this is posterior lateral portion so which is contributing to it if we come to the medial portion of this body of the sphenoid the anterior medial part of the body of the sphenoid is continuing with the pterygoid process so anterior medial is continuing with the pterygoid process and posterior medial is just articulating with the petrous part of the temporal bone so this description is for this and the anterior end of this that is the greater wing of the sphenoid is forming the posterior margin of the infraorbital fissure so this is the infraorbital fissure you can see in the orbit so it is forming the posterior margin of this now coming to the uh, posterior portion of the norma basalis in the posterior portion you can see the two condyles you can see the foramen magnum and behind the posterior margin this is the posterior margin of the foramen magnum from this one crest is just going backward this is known as the external occipital crest and this is known as the occipital protuberance so this is the occipital protuberance this is the external occipital crest so this protuberance as it is present on the outer side it is known as the external occipital protuberance and on this squamous portion of the occipital bone the knuckle lines are present that is superior knuckle line which is just corresponding to the external occipital protuberance and inferior knuckle line which is just present below this that is between the posterior margin of the foramen magnum and external occipital protuberance this middle portion is traversed by the inferior knuckle lines now in this condylar portion you can see one foramina which is present behind these condyles these are known as the posterior condylar canal which is just transmitting the emissary vein that is connecting the suboccipital venous plexus with the sigmoid sinus so this uh, condylar vein this posterior condylar vein is just ending into the sigmoid sinus just beneath the condyles you can see this is known as the hypoglossal canal so this is the hypoglossal canal through which the hypoglossal nerve it passes meningeal branch of the hypoglossal nerve passes then meningeal branch of the ascending pharyngeal artery it passes so the hypoglossal nerve is just passing through the canal so uh, the damage to the this nerve it happen it does not happen so easily because it is just protected by these condyles so another name of this hypoglossal canal is the anterior condylar canal canal because, because in relation to this so two canals are present that is this is the posterior condylar canal which is present on the posterior aspect of hypoglossal canal and just beneath the condyle this is known as the hypoglossal canal now just lateral to this condyle this foramina is known as the uh, jugular foramina so this jugular foramina uh, is just on the lateral side you can see a depression is it visible so this is the uh, depression which is known as the jugular fossa now in this jugular fossa you can see one canaliculus which is known as the mastoid canaliculus in the center and the at the anterior end of this jugular foramen between this carotid canal and the jugular foramen this is known as the tympanic canaliculus so this is the tympanic canaliculus clear now through this mastoid canaliculus which structure passes that is the auricular branch of the vagus nerve it passes through this that just traverses the bony portion and come out through this tympanomastoid fissure to supply this region of external acoustic meters so that is the auricular branch of the vagus nerve and what are the structures which are just passing through this jugular foramen you can see this is the jugular foramen so it is divided into three parts anterior middle and posterior part through the anterior part the structure passing is inferior petrosal sinus 
and the meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery in the middle portion 9th 10th and 11th nerve they passes and in the posterior portion in this region so the meningeal uh, uh, branch of the uh, occipital artery it uh, passes through it then what is important is that is the sigmoid sinus and the internal jugular vein it sigmoid sinus passes through it and continue as the internal jugular vein and this is the bulb of uh, this is known as the jugular fossa which is for the bulb of internal jugular vein so right side this fossa is quite deep and on the left side it is smaller now coming uh, the tympanic canaliculus which is present at the anterior end of this jugular fossa it is just giving way to the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal now so this is uh, another structure which is passing through it now this is foramen magnum now through this foramen magnum the we just divide the foramen magnum into three parts that is anterior middle and posterior part through the posterior part the spinal medulla then tonsils of the cerebellum and the meninges they pass in the middle portion the important structures are that is uh, vertebral artery passes spinal accessory nerve passes plexus around the vertebral artery it passes through it then interior and posterior spinal artery and on, on in the in, uh, interior part of this foramen magnum the apical ligament of dense and membrane tectoria it passes or it is attached to the margin of this foramen magnum so this is all about the um, norma basalis so what are the important foramina present as a whole in this is that is in the interior part we have seen this incisive fossa with incisive canals then greater palatine foramina then lesser palatine two three lesser palatina foramina which are present in the pyramidal process of palatine bone then here is the vomerovaginal and palatovaginal canals are there then here the foramen ovale is there behind the ovale is the foramen spinosum and just medial to the ovale this is known as the foramen lacerum so not particular thing which passes through it except the mishri vein which are connecting this with cavernous sinus that passes through it then this is the carotid canal through which the internal carotid artery passes just behind it this is stylomastoid foramen through which the facial nerve and stylomastoid branch of the posterior auricular artery it passes this is jugular foramen we divide the jugular foramen into three parts that is anterior middle and posterior in the middle portion 9th 10th and 11th nerve passes from the posterior side the internal jugular vein it come out from the sigmoid sinus and in the anterior part it is the inferior petrosal sinus and this is the hypoglossal canal through which the hypoglossal nerve passes meningeal branch of hypoglossal nerve passes then meningeal branch of the ascending pharyngeal artery it passes so this is the posterior condylar canal through which the mishri vein connecting the suboccipital venous plexus with the sigmoid sinus it passes and this is the foramen magnum through the anterior part of which the apical ligament of dense and membrane tectoria that is attached or passes in the middle portion the vertebral artery spinal arteries plexus around the vertebral artery and spinal accessory nerve it passes and from the posterior side it is the portion of the uh, brain that is which portion that is the spinal medulla tonsils of the cerebellum and meninges they passes so this is all about the uh, norma basalis so if you like my video so i request you kindly like it share it and subscribe it